Okay, let's start off with running in place. Okay, if running is not working for you because of joint problems, because of back problems, you can march or you can walk back and forth. But this is to warm up, so you need to start moving. Punches now, keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. shuffle forward and back keep your hands up so when I'm going forward I lead with my front foot and the back one drags when I'm going back I lead with the back foot and the front one drags this is going to be important a little bit later And knees. Keep the standing one bent. That keeps um, a load on this leg. So it's just more work. If you're doing the work anyway, you may as well do a little bit more. Other side. Okay, next one is skaters. Ideally, you step and touch behind. If you want more, step and reach behind and balance. If you need less, step and touch. And kicks, front side back. your hands up. Make sure that the standing foot is pointed in the right direction, which means when I'm throwing a side kick there, the toes of the standing foot are pointing that way. Okay, now we stretch. Reach up. Straight out to the front. Okay, when I go out to the front, my chin is up, my back is flat. I'm not rounded here. It's completely flat. Someone could actually stand here. And then reach for the floor. Okay, over to one side, lift your chin, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knees. I'm not quite about pulling my head to my knee. My head is up and I'm pulling my chest to my knee. Now I have a side stretch, both heels on the floor. If you need more stretch, take this elbow inside the knee, push the knee further open. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Stand up, straighten out both knees. All my toes are facing in the same direction. My chin is up, my back is flat. I'm not going this way, I'm going this way. So I'm pulling my chest toward my front knee. As you feel this primarily in the hamstring and front leg, you also feel it a little bit in the calf of the back leg. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, chin up, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch. Focus on heels on the floor.
turn, <coughs> stretch your hip flexor. Again, if you want a little bit more, you could take this elbow, push into the knee. Straighten up the legs, toes in the same direction, knee straight, chin up, chest toward the front knee. Have a seat, bottoms of your feet together, okay? You can either grab your ankles and push your knees down, or you can put your hands here, because in either case, your back needs to be flat. Okay? Grabbing your ankles rounds your back, it's, you're not getting a good stretch. So in that case, put your hands here, so your elbows are pushing into your back, and pushing your back straight, and just push your knees down. Straight out in front of you, grab your toes, pull your heels up off the floor. Okay, I'm not rounded here, my chin is still up. Pull your feet in, heels on the floor, rock back and forth. Put your hands down, straighten out your legs. Again, rather than having your head here, lift your chin and up. Okay, then we're going to do three exercises, one that targets upper body, one that targets core, one that targets lower body, and each one, I'm going to show it to you, and then you're going to do it on your own, once I've shown them all to you, for at least a minute each. The first one is tabletop to L-sit. Some of you guys hate this one. I don't really care. I like this one. It's going to keep on coming back. What you need to do when you do this is you don't want your hands way back here. You want your hands, ideally your fingers are facing this way. My wrists don't bend enough to do that. I have to do this up on my, on my knuckles. But you want to be so that when you're in L sit, you don't want your hands way back here behind your hips. You want them here, forward of your hips. So then I put my feet down, I lift my hips, push them to the ceiling, and then I pull them back behind my hands. My butt is not touching the floor. The goal here with the L-sit would be eventually to get your feet up to hold them off the floor. I'm not there yet, but I got more weight off them than I did this time last summer. So hips up and then pull your hands, behind, your butt behind your hands, butt off the floor. Okay, that's tabletop to L-sit. One minute. Next one, is cross-legged. So like locked up, feet crossed. We're gonna do sit-ups this way. So my hands are here. They're not pulling me up and down. Okay, they're staying here towards the ceiling. So they come up, my legs are crossed. It gives you way less leverage than having them out here. So it's more work on your core. If you let your arms come back here, then you're shoulders are pulling you up, which is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your core muscles to be pulling you up. Okay, so that's the second one. The third one is squat to lunge. Now, when you do a squat, you want the bulk of your weight to be on your heels. So you want your feet out comfortably so that you're planted solid. You want your toes straight forward and you want your weight in your heels. You can actually take your toes off the floor when you do this, okay? You're not going here or here. Think about a chair behind you and you're putting your butt down on the chair. So my shoulders are staying over my hips. When I do my lunge, I'm stepping back far enough <clears throat> that my knee is over my ankle. If you don't step back far enough, you get your knee sticking out past your ankle, past your toes, that puts a lot of stress on your knee. So step back far enough that your ankle, knees over your ankle, and almost touch your knee to the floor. If you're doing it on a mat or on a carpet with a pad under it, if you bang your knee on the floor, it doesn't matter. If you do it on the wooden floor, on the pavement like that, it's gonna hurt. So you're gonna step out, squat, step in, lunge. Squat, lunge. Squat, lunge. 
squat, lunge. And I want you to do that for a minute. So a minute of tabletop to L sit, a minute of, I think they call it Taylor sit with your legs crossed, sit ups, and a minute of squat to lunge. Okay, so we're gonna start with a back leg side kick. So you're gonna start in your yard stance. This foot has to turn. The easiest thing to do when you're standing is to turn the foot part way before you start the kick. Chamber, turn, butt and heel face the target, kick, make sure when you kick, this foot turns so it's facing that way, land forward. Turn, kick, turn, kick. And then we'll back up because that's all I have room for before I run into the camera and the microwave. Okay, so this one's a work on excellence. So the things that you wanna be thinking about when you do this, the standing foot, toes turn all the way. If my target's there, toes of the standing foot are facing there. My butt and my heel are facing the direction that I'm kicking, and my toes are pointing down. Okay, they're not up like this, but they're down, which forces my hips square to that wall. So we're gonna come forward again, turn, and kick, turn, and kick, turn, and kick. Okay, then <clears throat> we're going to, we're gonna jump, okay? I'm in the house, I'm not gonna jump really hard, but I'm gonna, I'm still gonna kick with the back leg and land forward, but I'm gonna jump as I do it. So I'm gonna start here, jump, kick. Okay, so I'm not skipping forward. I'm just taking this leg that's in the back, bringing it to the front and jumping. Back leg comes to the front and I jump. Back leg comes to the front and I jump. This is a better thing to practice outside. Don't shake anything off the shelves when you do it. Okay, then we're gonna do something different and then we're gonna put them together. So I'm gonna start now in this guard stance. I'm gonna take this leg, my back leg, it's gonna pull me off the floor. So I'm not gonna, I'm not kicking right now. My leg is gonna pull me off the floor and I'm gonna switch directions. Pulls me off the floor and I switch directions. So again, here, up and turn, up and turn. Going back the other way. Okay, so now I'm gonna put those two things together. This leg is gonna come up off the floor. It's gonna turn me. And while I'm in the air, I'm gonna kick. So I'm kicking and I'm traveling forward. Okay, if you have a heavy bag in the house or in your garage or the basement or wherever it is, have somebody hold the heavy bag. I'm gonna do flying side kick into the heavy bag. If you're working in a space where you have room, you can actually run. So run up to it, and then flying side kick into the heavy bag. If you don't have a heavy bag, ask someone to hold the target for you. So a focus pad, a pillow, a piece of paper. Okay, if there's nothing to hit, when you hit something, you're gonna kind of bounce off. If there's nothing to hit, you're gonna keep going. So just be careful of your landing, okay? So have somebody hold the target out there for you, and flying side kick into your target. Five on each leg. And then if somebody did the courtesy of holding a target for you, you need to trade with them. Okay, this month, you guys are getting your stripe for excellence and you're getting your star for integrity. Okay, so we're gonna work on, if you were in the red belt class, you're required to be able to do a stripe test, action karate form three, which is the beginner form of the cycle, action karate form six, which is the intermediate form, and action karate form nine, which is your form. Okay, where the integrity comes into play here is integrity means doing the right thing even when nobody's watching. That means you know what forms you're supposed to be practicing this cycle. That means even if there's not somebody standing there going, hey, did you practice your forms? You should be doing at least those three forms every single day. Okay, so if you're a red belt and you haven't learned nine yet, by the end of next month, you should know the whole form. You should know all of three, which we're gonna practice today. You should know all of six. We're gonna practice the first part of six today. Okay, but integrity means practicing those, even if there's not somebody telling you. It doesn't mean coming to strike testing going, oops, I don't know this form, or following along with somebody else at strike test. Okay, so we're gonna start with action karate form three. We start here, down in a horse stance. Okay, my target for this first 
thing is directly behind me. So I'm throwing elbows at the person behind me. So my toes are facing forward. So I can lean into it. It's just as if my target was in front of me. Toes out would be if my target was to the side. Okay, I turn. I'm in a bow stance here. I block, somebody's trying to hit my knee. I block and then I protect my face. Other side, block, protect my face. Somebody grabs my hand. I pull it away. I step in, I back fist them, the side of the neck. I step in again, punch, chamber my hands, descending back fist. Spin back fist, okay? So this, when I spin, it's gonna be my left hand that's doing the back fist, so the left hand tucks inside. I spin, I have to see my target before I throw the back fist. Step out in the front stance to punch, okay? So you're here for your back fist, don't just twist. Step into the front stance to punch. Hands come up. We're gonna do a back leg round house kick. These toes have to be facing in that direction. Back leg round house kick, I'm gonna chop. Hands chamber here, chop. Step back, chop. And one more time, step back, chop. Cross feet. Next move is an axe kick. Axe kick chamber is the same as a front kick chamber. So my target's there, which means my knee needs to come straight up here. Grab the person's head that I just kicked, throw them on the floor. This stance is a close kneel, which means my knee is almost on the floor, but it's not quite on the floor because the person is there. I punch them, and then there's another attacker coming. I turn to the front, I kneel, high block, open hand, and punch. Okay, and that's the end of the form. So action karate form three. I gave you all the pieces. We talked about the details. We're going to do the same thing with the next two forms. Um, and that's, that's where the excellence comes in. Having the correct stances, understanding what you're doing with each move so that we can see the martial intent once you're hitting. Okay, so now action karate form six and nine. The first part of six and nine are very similar. So action karate form six, I start here. I'm in the guard stance. First move, I back fist. Okay, I'm just in a neutral stance. I'm going to step out to a front stance and punch, and then turn to a cross stance and hammer. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting temple or the side of the neck. I'm rotating, I'm hitting the solar plexus, and then I'm rotating again, I'm throwing a hammer fist. Someone's throwing a kick at me, and I'm throwing a hammer fist right to the inside of their knee. Okay, then I do front kick, pump front kick, low block. Okay, so one more time. Action karate form six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, nine is very similar to that. Six has closed hands, nine has open hands. So I start here, action karate form nine in my guard stance. So now I'm gonna chop. Chop is gonna be to the neck or to the throat, not to the side of the head. Turn and punch, block, I'm still striking somebody here, but this time I'm striking with the side, my open hand, rather than with the hammer fist. Front kick, pump front kick, low block. Okay, so action karate form nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to do each one of those five times. So five times through action karate form three, whole thing. Five times through first part of action karate form six, five times through first part of action karate form nine. I'm not looking for a race. Okay, we're working on excellence this month, which means you focus on the stance, you focus on your target, you focus on what you're doing, and you're getting your star for integrity, which means even if there's nobody standing here watching you, you do each one of those forms five times. Okay, we're gonna do the beginning of three different self-defenses today. The first one is from the beginner curriculum. So you'll learn this when you were a white belt or a blue belt. Somebody comes up behind you and they choke you. Okay, somebody's choking you, you know the first most important thing to do is to breathe. So if they've got their arm here, what I wanna do is tuck my chin into here. Okay, if I let them get their arm here, they can pull their arm up into my throat and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to breathe. But if I can get my chin tucked here, now I can breathe. So they come up behind me and they choke me. I'm going to tuck my chin, drop my weight, 
and throw two elbows. Okay, so this should look like the beginning that we just did of action karate form three, where you just dropped your weight, toes straight out, and elbows. Except here you're gonna throw the elbows one at a time. So somebody comes up, my hands are up, somebody comes up to me, they choke me, I don't want any trouble. I'm going to tuck my chin, first thing, breathe. Drop my weight, elbow, elbow, and then I'm gonna reach up and I'm gonna grab their arm. Okay, so their arm is here. I'm gonna grab this way and peel. Okay, see how I have, I have the turkey head, okay? And I peel it this way. That hurts when your hand gets peeled that way, so they're gonna, you're, you're making space to get your arm in there. So hands up, I don't want any trouble. Tuck your chin, drop your weight, elbow, elbow, peel. Okay, let's do that again. Hands are up, they choke you. Tuck your chin, drop your weight, elbow, elbow, peel. Okay, that's the beginning of the beginner self-defense. The, the intermediate self-defense, the green belt class, is a headlock, so somebody's standing next to me facing the same direction that I am and they put me in a headlock. So I'm going to go with them. Okay, I'm not gonna stand here and do this. I'm gonna go with them and then I'm gonna take this hard part of my arm and I'm gonna slam it into anywhere soft on this part of their leg or their groin. What makes this work is as they choke me, I step in, okay? If I'm pulling away and stepping out, I can't reach to hit them. Okay, so they're gonna choke me, I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna strike, and then I'm gonna take my hand up their back to the top of their head. That's as far as we're gonna go right now. Okay, so they're gonna, my hands are up, somebody comes up there next to me, they're facing the same direction as I am. I step in, I strike the groin, and hand comes to the back of the neck. Last one, from the red belt curriculum. Someone's punching you in the head, what do you need to do? You need to get out of the way. So the punch is coming at me. I'm going to get out of the way. Out of the way. Out of the way. Okay, so they're punching me with their right hand. That's on this side of my body. I'm stepping to the outside and blocking with my left hand. So there's the third to punch at me. I get out of the way. I block. Get out of the way. Block. Okay, the next piece of this is a parry. So a block is a strike. It's a force-to-force -force strike. I come across and I block. I'm blocking with this part of my hand. Now when I do the parry, I come up underneath and the back of my hand pushes their hand away. It might catch at the end, but this is a block. It's a push, it's, you're slamming into it. And a parry is a redirect. So punch is coming in my head. I'm going to block parry. So going in this direction, punch comes at my head, block, parry, block, parry, block, parry. Okay, so now this is where you need a partner. So you're going to stand with your eyes closed and your hands up. Somebody's going to come up to you and they're either going to choke you from the back. If they choke you, if they choke you from the back, the first thing you do is open your eyes. Tuck your chin, drop your weight. Elbow, elbow, peel. Okay, if you're here with your eyes closed and your hands up and they come up and they put you in a headlock, you open your eyes, you step in with them, you strike the groin and you track your hand up the back of, your, of their neck to their head. If your hands are, eyes are closed and your hands are, if they wanna throw a punch, they're gonna tap you on the shoulder first. You're gonna open your eyes, they're going to throw a punch, block, parry. Okay, so I want whoever your partner is to attack you five times. Actually, five isn't really enough because that's not even going to be twice through each one. Ten times. Have them attack you ten different times. And each time with a, one of those different attacks, either mother's hold, headlock, or a punch. You open your eyes and you defend yourself. Okay, last week we talked about different motions with the stick. We talked about some strikes that follow through and some strikes that just bounce off. We're gonna do six strikes today that all follow through. So they're all in your right hand. You start off with your left hand at the bottom of the stick. 
you put your right one above it and you let go of the left one. So you should have enough space underneath for your hand. Okay, I'll do this facing both directions. You start, you step back into your guard stance and you protect your head. Okay, look how my stick is, it's protecting my head. If my stick is this way, it is not protecting my head. It's gotta be here. Other hand is always up covering my face. So I'm gonna step back, protect my head. I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna strike. I'm gonna follow through. So I'm not just tapping, I strike all the way through down and down. And then I come again from the right side up and then from the left side up. And from the right side, I'm gonna strike the cross and from the left side, I'm gonna strike across. So your target here when you're striking down is collarbones. When you're striking up, it could be leg, it could be hip, it could be ribs. When you're striking across, it's ribs. So we start here, you step back and you cover your head. You're making an X down, right to left, left to right. Then you're making an X up, right to left, left to right. Then you're going across, right to left, left to right. If you have a heavy bag, practice it on your heavy bag. Um, I wouldn't suggest hitting something else. If there's somebody else in your house who has a stick, you can practice these against their stick. Across, across, they have to be doing something else. So even if you're, if you're practicing with someone else, which would be ideal, you're gonna start here and you're gonna hit the other person's stick. Down, down, up. Up. Then you're going to back away and you're both going to hit across and across. Okay, so one more time, go. So we're all going in the same direction. Step back, cover your head, down, down, up, up, across, across. Okay, side. Last week, we practiced punch, open the side, close the side. You should have practiced that. You should be able to do that with both hands. If you can't do that with both hands, the next part of the form is not going to work. So if you can't do that, turn the video off and go back and practice this. We did it last week. Okay, we're gonna do the beginning of the form. We start here, courtesy. I'm going to open both hands, step up, side come up, they come down. I close them both and I circle. Okay, then I'm gonna to go to the left, chop. So when I chop, my tines are flat. I'm, I'm in a reverse bow stance. I'm gonna to turn to a forward bow and punch. Tines are up and down for that. I'm gonna orbit around my head and come back. Now tines are up, still up and down because what I'm doing is I'm taking the side of someone's face here, raking their face. Okay, so we'll do this so that we're all facing the same direction. Courtesy, step out, open, drop, close, circle, chop, punch, orbit, rake the face, and back. And again, facing the same direction. Courtesy, they both open, they both close, and you circle. I'm going to, so when I step to make this a reverse bow, I'm going to turn my hips into that corner. So if my hips are facing that way and I'm looking that way, this is a reverse bow. Then when I rotate, now my hips are facing the direction I'm going, that's forward bow. Orbit and rake. Okay, at least 10 times.